change from child to this joy of what remains. Reflections change from child to this joy of what remains. Never turn away.
got caught up in the world and the weight of the lies you came to save now i realize that you are the way the truth and the lie commit to me and ease my mind when i get caught up in the world
Texas. Oh, I know. <laughs> we start. You want to start? Ready? Yep. Let's do it. Do you want to be a selfie with your selfie? Yeah. Morning. Morning. Now listen, our, our scheduled singer is still in route. So we have a substitute singer. She's agreed to try this. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah. Woo! Cheer her on, yeah. yeah. Let's have it. <laughs> Are you 
kidding me? I mean, she's no Mark Rossioli, but, but she, that was good, right? What do you think of that, Joe? Did you know she could do that? Oh, you knew that, huh? Wow, she's been holding out on us. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Wow, let's hear it. Gee, I wonder if we're going to ask her to do that again sometime. I just wonder. I just wonder. Now, hey, Hannah's still en route, and we got more, uh, some, a good song coming up from Hannah later on. I hope she, she's still en route? She's still en route, so that's good. So we'll hear from Hannah soon. So thank you. Now, I've, I've, I've jumped in front of you. Yeah, just push me right out of the way. Get up here. <laughs> it's all yours. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> no, that's no big deal. Good morning. Um, if you would like to contribute to our weekly offering, please place those donations in the gold plate located in the back. And Unity of Faith prayer meeting is tonight at Bowmansville Mennonite. This brief community gathering will be at 7 p.m. and everyone is encouraged to attend. Breakfast. We are serving sausage, eggs, and French toast on Sunday, October 2nd at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Please join us and everyone is welcome. And we have a movie night. Soul Surfer will be showing on Saturday, October 8th in the church parking lot. Food will be available at 6 p.m. and the movie will begin at 7 p.m. Invite your family and friends for a great evening of fellowship. And T-Bones, we are gathering again at Rank's Restaurant for dinner on Wednesday, November 9th at 5.30 p.m. If interested, please sign up on the sheet located at the bulletin board. Meal selections and prices are shown there. And Elf, we have tickets available to see the show Elf at the Dutch Apple Theater Dinner Theater on Thursday, December 1st. If interested, please see the sign-up sheet located on the bulletin board for more information. Do we have any other announcements? Okay, I just wanted to take a second and thank everyone for their cards and prayers um, with Jane's passing last week. It has made, a <clears throat> means a lot. And thank you. Thank you, Charlie. And good morning again. Great to see everybody. Nice to see you, Pete. There's Pete sitting right there. Looking fit as a fiddle, Pete. You look great. That's enough nonsense now, Pete. What do you think? You had enough of the hospital stuff, but great to see you, Pete. You look good. You look good. Where's Sherry? She's Sherry's on her, on her way, too. We have a birthday girl coming here. She's on her way, too. That's good. Anything else right now? Are we streaming? Are we live streaming? If there's any, any live streamers out there that have any announcements, please text those announcements to D or to Jerry, and we'll lift those up later in the service. Anything else for right now? Everybody good? God's word tells us we're more blessed than we can possibly imagine, right? Be faithful with what you have been given, and then God will entrust you with even more. May we, who are asked to give an accounting of our talents and our gifts, be found to be faithful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, source of every good gift, you call us to be wise with the true riches of your kingdom. Help us this day to grow in your heavenly wisdom, that having been found faithful with a little, you will trust us to be faithful with much. We come before you now with humble and open hearts, ready to be your vessels of healing and light in this church and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our song of praise is number 456 in your red hymnal. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Seems to me, we, if you're able, we should probably stand up.
please remain standing if you're able for our confession of sin. Generous God, too often we neglect the talents you give us and do less with your true riches than the greedy do with the dishonest wealth of this world. As you search our hearts and ways, may we be found faithful with a little that you will entrust us to be faithful with much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions and remembers your sins no more. Amen. Our responsive reading today, our Psalter, I'm sorry, our Psalter reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Please join me in this responsive reading. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the Lord. Do not look to the proud, to the Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us, none can compare with you. Were I, were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire you. Praise the Lord. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 36 to 41. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 18, and chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do, you, who, <clears throat> who do people say the man, Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, 
Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Charlie. Children are going, huh? Oh, Kathleen, you're taking them. Have fun. Goodbye. For visiting. So, so this is this is supposed to be more of a chat than a sermon. Although, Brian, I can tell you, it's not. It won't be the shortest chat you've ever heard. It won't be the shortest chat. But it is. It's supposed to be more of a chat. And I think it's intended to be something that we would chat among ourselves, you know, and evolve a little bit as a chat in the weeks and months ahead. Now, we all agree, I know we do, that that this place represents happy birthday, by the way. I've got to take a a moment. Our dear friend Sherry sitting right here. It's her her birthday today. So happy birthday, Sherry. (laughs) Happy birthday, Sherry talk a little bit more about Sherry later on, but happy birthday. Thanks for sneaking in on us. Thanks for sneaking in on us. So back to the chat, right? We all agree this place is special. It's a, it's a special place. And it represents a lot, I think, to us. It's important to all of us. And we're actually, we're pretty lucky, aren't we? We're pretty lucky to be, to be part of this. And so I want us to talk more and to think more about this place and what we're called to do with it. You know, think about that. Talk about that more as we, as we move forward. Okay, in our first reading today, in Acts chapter 2, this is a story we've, we're familiar with this. We've talked about this before. It's the first apostles in the very early church. They heard the call. They heard the call, and they answered the call together, right? It was a small group. They were driven by the Holy Spirit, that's for sure, and they went out and they shared the good news. And the results of what they did were very measurable, weren't they? In our reading today, it says in verse 41, they added how many new members in that one day. Anybody remember? 3,000. They added 3,000 members in one day. Now here's a spoiler. We're not gonna, our goal is not gonna be that high. Our goal will be less than that. And then in the next paragraph, the Bible says, they added to their numbers daily. I mean, this was obviously important. It wasn't trivial. It's there. Yeah? It was important. Growth was important. In our gospel reading today, heard from Charlie, in Matthew chapter 16, the disciples first time acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah. And he was the head of their church. He was the, he was the head. He was the head of their church. Just like he is the head of our church. Is no different. And in verse 18, Jesus called Peter, and he's calling all of us, I have no doubt, to build his church. That is exactly what Jesus said. To build his church, not to shrink it, not to shut it down, not to let it die. Nope, he says, you're supposed to grow it. And, and get this, I like this, right in that verse. 
Jesus promised right there, if we do it, and we do it together, he says, even the gates of hell will not overcome it. Remember that? I mean, that's good, right? That's a good line. That's a promise from the head of our church. If we do it, even the gates of hell can't overcome it. That's awesome. And then, of course, in chapter 28, we heard, that's the Great Commission. We've all heard this. And that's where Jesus tells us, now go get out there. Go out there. Get out there and get more people. Get more disciples. Tell the good news. Go share it. Share the love yeah, with others. And he says this right there. He says, and you don't need to be nervous about it. You don't need to be timid about it. Because who's going to be always right there with us? Who's going to be there with us? He is. That's what he said. He says, I'll be with you always. But make no mistake. Jesus says, I want you to build my church. And we don't have to be overwhelmed by that. We don't need to be a megachurch, nor do we want to be, with all due respect, to megachurches. That's not what we're striving to be. And this does not have to be some grandiose endeavor. That's not the deal. The story of the Bible, the lesson often is that small acts by ordinary people can have huge eternal impacts. We love the story of Tabitha. Remember that story? We wrote a song about her. I hope you remember that. Remember that. In Acts chapter 9, we had a sermon about her one time. In Acts chapter 9, her attribute was that she was, quote, always doing good and helping the poor. That's it. That's how she was described. In our song, Tabitha, we say, goodness was, is where you are. That's how she's described. That's, and that's it. And yet her life, her story, dramatically changed the Bible and the course of the church. Very, very significantly. Now, as a side note, i got to tell you something about that song. If you think about that song, and it's the fourth song, I think, on the album. You've got to listen to it. I wrote most of that song while I was down in Niceville, Florida, a year or so ago. And I had it pretty well done. But I thought there should be a second verse. And I was completely stumped. I just was blocked on what to write about. On the second verse. The rest of it was all about that chapter 9. Everything was from that chapter 9. And I just blanked on the second verse. And then out of the blue, this girl right here, Jerry, texted me a, like a daily devotional, which she commonly does. And the devotional she sent me was based on the 40th Psalm, which, guess what, is our responsive reading today. It's right there in your bulletin. And if you look at it, it says this. It says, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. I mean, that's a great, that's a verse about recovery, renewal, new life. And it was perfect. It was perfect about us and about Tabitha. And in our song, that verse became the following lyric. He sets my feet on solid ground and guides me as I walk along. And renewed she brings a song to sing. That's where it's from, the 40th Psalm. Okay, so here's a question. Doesn't all of this, at least somewhat, remind us of us, of St. Paul's, of us. Doesn't it sort of hit home? Again, not to be overly grandiose. God, that's my word of the day, Barry. Grandiose. I like that. 
Not to be overly grandiose about it, no. But these are all lessons here. So what's the lesson here for us? With Tabitha, with Peter, with the psalm writer who was, guess who? King David, yep. And with the early church and with all those apostles back then, it was not time for them to fail. It was not time for them to die. They could have. They definitely could have, every one of them. But it was not time. It was not time for them to fail. Instead, God set their feet on solid ground and He wanted them to move forward, to walk on in love. And He wanted them to grow His church. Okay, here's the good part, Bear. Now here's a story for you. It's a little, it's a little tricky. I should probably tell you to turn the cameras off, but I won't. I think this story will help frame where we are, I think. Now listen to this, listen to this. About two years or so ago, don't remember exactly, I was on a Zoom call with, I know it was with Carrie Call and a few others, not that many, with the national president of the UCC. His name's John Dorhauer. Nice, nice fellow, nice guy. John had written a book called Beyond Resistance. Right here it is. So before the meeting, I bought the book and I read the whole thing. As they say, I read it so that you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. And there are a few things in here, you know, that I agree with. And then there's a whole lot of things in here that I don't agree with. Big surprise, right? Big shock. But the only thing I'm going to talk about right now is John's attitude towards growth. And I believe that attitude is well represented by the title of the very first chapter of this book. And the title is Death with Dignity. How do you like that? That's right. Death with Dignity. And by death, trust me, he is talking about the death of churches like ours. In John's mind, it's to be expected and even accepted that we're going to die, that they'll die. Let them die with dignity. John tells the story right here, and I promise you I'm not altering this story. He tells the story of visiting one of the churches in his conference, one of the so-called, he calls them, dying churches. And he said he reviewed their financial statements. Good idea, right? Good idea. But get this. He says, after only about 10 minutes, he reviewed their financials for 10 minutes. That's what he said. After 10 minutes, he said this to that small, unfortunate church. Quote, this is a quote. This isn't rocket science, folks. You can afford your pastor or your building, but you can't have both. You have to figure out a way to be a church with a pastor, but not a building, or a church with a building, but not a pastor. End quote. Period. End of the consultation. That was it. In my personal opinion, you can really tell the difference between a person that has a master's of divinity and a person that has a master's in business management. Because I'm asking myself, oh, wait a minute. What about the product? How's their program? Do they have any music? What about their customer base? How's the community? Are they meeting anybody's needs? Does anybody understand the community? What about their competition? 
How are the other churches around them doing? No idea. There's no, 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 no sense of that. What about marketing? Assuming they had anything worth selling, what were they doing to spread the word? No idea. There's no hint of anything like that in here. No idea. No apparent thought to that. It's almost as if any of those business kind of things, kind of things, were beneath, were beneath them, you know. And maybe business aspects should be beneath us. Maybe we should be sustained by our passion, right? Our mission, by our social justice causes. Maybe all that stuff should be enough. But I can tell you in reality, that's not enough. That's not enough. Those things are important, but so is staying open. And the adults in the room, because the kids left, right? right? The kids left. The adults in the room, they have to take care, take care of business too. And sometimes that's hard work. It's not always fun. But the hard work of growing the church, not shrinking it and letting it die, that's what Jesus called us to do. We read about it. It's right in here. He never said, eh, let it die. And so the good part's still coming, by the way. And so I said to John on this Zoom call, respectfully, pretty respectfully, I posed a simple question to him. And the question was, why? I referred to his book, and I asked him why. I said, why would or should we accept that our church numbers will continue to decline and many of our churches will inevitably die? Why would we accept that? Is that a good, that's a good question, isn't it? And his answer was shockingly simple. And again, I'm not making this up. He said, because people have options. And that was about it. And I thought to myself then, and I'm still thinking to myself, wow, what if at Bank of America, right work, by the way, my boss had said to me, Phil, why are you losing so many customers? Now, that never happened, I can tell you. But what if it had? Phil, why are you losing so many customers? And my answer was, well, because they have options. Okay. Would that have been a good answer? What do you think would have happened? I would have gotten fired. <laughs> on the spot. On the spot. You're not kidding. Like, Tabitha? Peter, Paul, the early church, our story is not and should not be over. No way. And think about this. Do you agree with this? And you can disagree with it, but think about this. This building is not an anchor weighing us down. Is it? Can, the kind of thing he said. Can you imagine thinking that way? Defeatist? I think this building is a blessing. It's a gift. We've had it for 140 years or so. It's a gift we've been given. It's entrusted to us. I think we've done a pretty nice job of sprucing her up a little bit. That's good. But the question now is, what are we going to do with it now? Now what are we going to do? And now, make no mistake, I think we've been doing a lot. Yeah? We've done a lot, and we've seen some nice growth. There's many beautiful new faces here in the past few years. It's great. That's all great. But I do think this is a pivotal time 
for us. Right now, I think it's a time we need to think about doing more with what we have. We're at a moment of good health with our feet on solid ground. Think about that. Not always the case. We're in a pretty good spot. With COVID, pretty well, I, you know, you don't, I don't know how to say it, right? Is it really behind us? Meh. You know, is it under control? I don't know. But it's manageable, right? It's not like it was. With most of the improvements that needed to be made, pretty much being having been made, some things we'd still like to do. We'll talk about that. Keep talking about it. But a lot of it's been done. What are we going to do now? Now what are we going to do? And I'm telling you, the sign of a healthy church should include some growth. Not growth like a weed. That's different. It doesn't have to grow like a weed, but it should grow. Growth in attendance and growth in income. And again, we're the adults in the room. Kids left. We should be able to talk about our finances without people getting all, you know, eh, uptight. No, we can talk about that. That's fine. And do not misunderstand. Nobody should misunderstand. Everything's fine here. We're doing good. Everything's fine. But this is, and that's when you should be thinking about stuff like this, when things are fine, not when you're in a panic. We're in no panic here. And I personally have no vision of this place like bursting at the seams and, you know, adding another service. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. But we have room to grow. And I am sure that is what the head of this church is calling us to do, to grow. So let's do it. But we need to do it together. And it will be fun. And I'm really glad to be a part of it. Amen. Wow. 
not hold you The veil torn before you The silence, the boast of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory For you are raised to life again You have no Good job, ladies. Thank you. Uh, joys and concerns of the church, announcements. Our dear friend Sherry, I don't know if we have a number, but it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Sherry. And I think we also have, it's another nice milestone for you today, Sherry. Am I right about that? You want to tell us about that or you want me to just say it? Go ahead and say it. We, we, we're all criers here, Sherry. You can say it. Three years today? We're proud of you. We're proud of you, Sherry. One day at a time, honey. You're doing great. You're doing great. Way to go. Three years today. That's awesome. Good job. We love you. Good job. Way to go. Um, look, check your newsletters. And the October newsletter is out. Check your newsletter for other birthdays and anniversaries that are coming up. I'm not sure there's any more in September, um, but be sure to check that out. Unity of Faith. I think it was Charlie mentioned most of this, maybe all of it. Unity of Faith prayer meeting tonight at Bowmansville Mennonite Church. Please come out. One hour, seven to eight. Campfire night is October 22nd. What's the time of that? We can start that at five o'clock. We'll start that at five o'clock. That'll be great. That's always fun. Um, we have sign-up sheets down there for ELF and for T-Bones. Check that out. The breakfast is on October 2nd. That's a Grace House Blessings Day, so that'll be cool. That'll be fun. Breakfast, what, is probably 9 o'clock or so, I would guess. Sound about right. Um, movie night, October 8th. Saturday, October 8th. The movie starts at 7, I'm guessing, right? Food, we'll have food and stuff starting at 6. And, um, and the movie Soul Surfer starts at 7. I want to say, um, hey, thank you everybody that helped out with the food bank. I think it was on, was that Thursday night or so? Um, we had a nice turnout from St. Paul's to help. Of course, Kieran and Nancy kind of really spearhead that, and we, we appreciate that very much. And it looked like they were, their shelves were kind of semi-bare, so we, we might want to take a look at that. You maybe sent me an email, I just don't remember. What they need. Do you know what they need right now? You happen to know, or maybe we can Okay. Check your newsletter about, uh, I, I've kind of been maybe slipping a little bit on it because we've had so much else going on, but check your newsletter and maybe I'll remember to announce that again next time. Um, if the food bank shelves looked a little bit bare to me, um, so we'll want to maybe step up on that a little bit um, in, the, in the weeks ahead. Yeah. Unsweetened applesauce. Low on juice, okay. Well, any kind of juice? It's a bottled juice, huh? Fruit, fruit juice, okay. Okay. Yeah, just probably, and as Jerry said, probably just about anything at this point. Um, okay. And toilet paper, you say? 
that's probably all, always a good idea, you know, when you're, when you're shopping. I know that stuff's expensive. It's unbelievable when you look at it. But, you know, if you could just grab it, you know, see something on sale, grab a couple extra things, throw it into the cart for the um, people's pantry downstairs. Um, very, very much appreciated. Uh, I think that's all. I've got Jane Storm's services on Saturday. You should all have an email about that, so check your email regarding Jane's service this coming Saturday. What else? Yes, Naomi. Okay, Glenn Weber. Uh, for him, he has Alzheimer's. Uh, him and his wife used to own all seafood catering, and the things that they catered to get here in Bone and stuff. And he also owns the Story Shed. And mm. they're thinking about now putting him in a nursing home because he too can't handle him anymore. And, and the first name again? Len. Len Weber. Local guy all, has Alzheimer's and, uh, you know, getting kind of bad there. Okay. We keep Len in our, in our prayers. Thank you, Naomi. Yes, Grace. Is that why you were so late today? Where'd you move to? Alaska? Where'd you move to? Redding. Oh, to Redding. Okay. All right. I have no idea where I'm at. So. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, now you know for next time, right? Okay. All right. Isn't she great? Thank you, Grace. Yes? Um, Sarah Sturr, one of our neighbors in the community, grows the um, Arlen Lando. Arlen Lando. Yes. Um, he's been in the hospital for two or three days now for bowel blockage. Okay. And he's in the hospital now? Mm-hmm. Thanks, Judy. Yes, sir, Ron. So how about prayers for the people of Puerto Rico as they face this impending storm? Because we all know how fragile their uh, infrastructure is. And I think I also heard that there's a big storm approaching Alaska. No, no, I haven't heard that. I heard about the Puerto, Puerto Rico, I hadn't heard about Alaska, but uh, Ron mentioned uh, the people of Puerto Rico, keep them in, their, in our prayers because of the storm coming, and apparently there's also one bearing down on Alaska. Thank you, Ron. Anybody else? Everybody good? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for leading us to this special place. For each, of our, for each of our life journeys, all of the different paths that are represented here today, thank you for the answered prayers and miracles that have brought us here together today. May we prove worthy of your call to build your church, to grow this church family as thy will would have it be done. We ask that you continue to bless us, each one, and may we every day find a way to be a blessing to others. We lift up to you now all of the joys and concerns of this church family. We thank you especially now for our dear friend Sherry, for her birthday, for her solid sobriety, and we know that every day is a victory, and we are especially grateful for her. And we thank you very much for the gifts and the presence of Dana and, of, and Hannah. And we look forward to many, many more songs from them. We remember especially now also Len Weber and Natalia, Arlen Lando, and we entrust their care to you 
We thank you for the care that they receive, and we pray for their, their caregivers, and we pray for comfort and healing for them all. We remember the people of Puerto Rico and Alaska as they face the coming storms. For all people mentioned here today, and those who remain silently on our hearts, we lift them all up to you. And we pray it all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom come, thy kingdom Our debts, and it's not in temptation, deliver us from me. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory. If you're able, would you please stand? Be faithful in a little, that you also may be found faithful in much. Be faithful in much, that you may be entrusted with true riches. Go forth now to be faithful children of light and come to know the grace, hope, and peace of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 481 in your red hymnal. So send I you. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5.